Hi there, in today's video we're gonna talk about the adverse yo. By the end of the video you will know what the adverse yo is and why you have to apply you know, some rather when you turn to the right or turn to the left when you're playing. Okay? So we're gonna go really in deep on what happened to your ailerons when you turn to the right, when you roll your aircraft to the right or to the left, and what are the causes that actually produce this adverse yo phenomenon. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Hi there, I'm Gabriel from pilotclimb.com and I help you to become a better pilot. So if this is what you want to do, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I'm making a lot of contents every week regarding pilot training. If you want to support the channel, give it a like. This is very important because we'll help YouTube to spread the videos. Okay, so let's talk about the adversio. First of all, in order to understand in full what the adversio is, we need to know, first of all, what is the yo and what is the role, okay? So, if I take this aircraft here, for give you, to, in order to give you a good example, okay, the yo of your aircraft, okay, is the movement around the vertical axe. So, what I mean by that? The vertical axe of the plane is the axe that goes from the bottom or from the top and goes through the aircraft. So, you have to imagine the vertical axe of your plane and the yo of the of the aircraft this is the movement around this axe so if this if the vertical axis is here the movement around that uh, axe is your yo so when the aircraft goes left and right with the nose but without rolling without doing any aircraft any wings movement that is actually your yo okay and the roll is the movement around the longitudinal axe so the longitudinal axe is the axe that goes through the fuselage so the roll is this movement here, okay? So guys, in order to make sure we understand the yo movement is the movement of your nose, okay, without any rolling, and the roll is this movement here, around the longitudinal axis. Fantastic. So what is the adverse yo now? Okay, we need to say, first of all, that the adverse yo is a phenomenon that is uh, more applicable for slow flying planes. Okay, so the slower the plane, okay, the higher is this effect. Okay, so if you're flying a Cessna 172 or a super uh, ultralight plane, that's big, big factor for you. Okay, so the adverse yo is the movement on your nose that goes against your turn, okay, against your roll. So let's say you want to roll to the right, okay, so you want to go like this, but the nose of your plane tends to go in the opposite direction. Okay, that's why it's called adverse yo, because it's the yo moment of your airplane that goes in the opposite direction of your rolling or your tap. Okay, so when you are on the plane, you want to bang to the right, you want to roll to the right. However, you feel that the nose of the plane is going to go slightly to the left. Okay, and when that happens, if you don't use your rudder pedal to keep your turn coordinated, you're going to perform an uncoordinated that okay but why the nose of your aircraft goes to the left when you want to bank and, and roll to the right and vice versa what happened so it all goes down to drag and lift okay so we need to understand that when you want to make a turn okay and you take your control and you want to do a, a, a roll to the right let's say okay what will happen is that the right wing will go down and the left wing will go up Okay, but how does it happen? Why the right wing goes down and the left wing goes, uh, goes up in order to make a right turn? It's because the right aileron, the right wing, in order to lower your wing and make you, uh, the aircraft roll to the right, will go up. And the left aileron on your left wing, if you want to turn right, okay, will go down. Okay, so what will happen is the left aileron will make the left wing to go up and the right aileron will make your right wing to go down, okay? In a second, we're gonna jump into the whiteboard in order to make a practical example, okay? So, but bear with me, okay? Let's try to understand first like this and then we're gonna, we're gonna jump into the whiteboard because then I, I will make sure that it's completely clear for you, okay? So, we say you bang to the right, you want to roll to the right, so the right wing needs to go down, so the right aileron will go up, Okay, so by going up, this wing is gonna go down and the left wing is gonna go up because the left aileron went down, okay? Now, if you think about that, by, by these aileron, the right and the left, by going up and down, they will create drag, okay? And the problem in here is that the left aileron, okay, the, the aileron that goes down in order to make sure that the wings goes up, okay, creates more drag than the right aileron. Okay, and when you create more drag than the, the when you create more drag, your speed actually decelerates, your speed decreases. Okay, so 
if you let's say you are turning okay so again guys I have to say that the adversary is not applicable for the 7 tree, okay? But uh, let's let's imagine that this is a really ultra light plane, okay? So you want to turn to the right, so you gonna go like that. So you have to imagine that this aileron in here is gonna go up, and the aileron on the right wing is gonna go down. But because the aileron on the sorry on the left wing, okay, the aileron on the left wing is gonna go down. But because the left aileron, the left wing creates more drag, what will happen, guys, is that since this creates more drag, will actually the speed will decrease a little bit, or it will decrease faster than the uh, than the right wing. So what will happen is that the nose will tend to turn to the left even though you want to go to the right. It's just because the aileron creates, the, the aileron that's, uh, the left aileron creates more drag, okay? So, okay, let's jump into the whiteboard and then we'll make a practical example in order to make sure that that's completely clear. All right, guys, welcome to the whiteboard in here, okay? So the first thing that I want to make sure and want to remark is that in order to contract for the adverse CO, that we said is the tendency of your, of your nose, is the your moment of your nose to go in the opposite direction of your thumb. So you want to bang to the right, thumb to the right, and your nose is going to go, is going to produce a your moment that is actually opposite to your thumb in the direction, okay? You need to apply, in order to correct that, you need to apply a little bit of rudder in the direction of the thumb. So if you turn to the right and you bang to the right, okay, you want to apply a little bit of right pedal in order to keep and maintain the turn coordinated. Okay, if you don't do that, you're gonna have your nose going to the left and your bang to the right, and you're gonna go into this uncoordinated turn. Okay. But what I want to make sure is that this is a applicable more for the slow flying plane as we said before. We don't do that on the Boeing 737. When you fly the Boeing 737, the airliners in general, you don't really apply any pedals when you when you fly, okay? When you do a, a, a turn, you don't coordinate the turn with your pedal, okay? You don't do that for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons is because the rudder is very efficient on the, is, is quite huge on the 73, okay, for example. If you use the rudder pedal during the turn, you go and go into the uncoordinated turn by trying to coordinate the turn, okay. Okay, so I just want to make sure that is, is clear, because if tomorrow you're going to go and fly in the simulator of the 73, don't apply rudder and during the turn, okay. It's more applicable for the ultralight and for small planes like the Cessna 172 and so on. All right, let's jump into the whiteboard in order to make sure that everything is clear. Okay, so as you can see here, we've got on the left, we've got this brown aircraft, and then on the right, we've got the picture from above, okay? The left aircraft, I think, is a Mustang. I'm not sure anyway, so if you know what type of aircraft is that, please, please let me know in the comments below, okay? So let's say that the pilot of the Mustang, okay, of the brown aircraft, wants to turn to the right, so he wants to bank to the right. What will happen is that in order to bang to the right, to do this movement here, okay, so bang to the right, this wing, the right wing, needs to go down, okay, and the left wing needs to go up, okay. How do you do that? When you bang to the right, when you take your control and you roll to the right, your right aileron in this case, so this surface in here, here we go, it's gonna go up, okay, because by going up, will make sure that the wings go down. And the left aileron, which is this one in here, okay, guys, sorry for my drawing, I know it's not great, but I want to make sure that the concept is clear. So this aileron is gonna go down, okay? So by the right aileron to go up and the left aileron to go down, you're gonna produce the left wing to go up and the right wing to go down, thus producing a roll to the right. Okay, so beautiful. But the problem that we said before that affect the aircraft with the uh, adversio is that the left aileron, this one, okay, the left aileron produce more drag than the right aileron. It's all about that. So the left aileron will produce more drag and more lift. Thus producing more drag, what will happen is that the, the left wing will decelerate a little bit compared to the right wing. Okay, so, and by doing these things, since the left wing is slowing down and the right wing is not compared to the, to the wings, okay, so the left wing is slowing down compared to the right wing, what will happen is that your nose will tend to go slightly to the left, even though you want and you will bump to the right, okay? So this is exactly what happened on the adversio. It's all about this, because if you look on the picture from the, from the top in here, okay, so since the left aileron, this one, Okay, left aileron 
is slowing down because it's producing more drive by going down compared to the right aileron, which is going up and is producing less drag, what will happen is that the aircraft will actually yaw to the left, even though it's gonna roll to the right, okay? So, how do you, uh, how do you correct that? We said you need to apply a little bit of rudder in the direction of the dart, okay? Beautiful. Okay, but now you can say, all right, Gabriel, that's all clear, but my aircraft flies slow, okay? It has got this type of aerials that one goes up and the other one goes down, but it doesn't have this adver adverse yaw. How does that happen? It's because some aircraft are equipped with some type of aerials that actually correct the adverse yaw, okay? Some aircraft, for example, are equipped with the uh, differential aerials, okay? What is the differential aerials? Is that the aerials that is gonna go up, go goes up more it's gonna have a bigger deflection compared to the aero that's gonna go down. By, by adding a little bit more of deflection, the aero that is gonna go up, okay, in the case of, of, our, of our example before, we want to bend to the right, so the right wing aero is gonna go up, okay, but it's gonna deflate a more than the left aero. Thus, by deflating more, it's gonna produce the extra drag that is actually producing the left aileron. Thus, you will not have any speed difference on the wings. So one wing will not decelerate because they are producing the same amount of drag. They will both stay at the same level, okay? Because in the example that we said before, the left wing has the, uh, in case of a uh, right arm, okay? The left wing is gonna have the aileron to go down that will produce more drag compared to the right wing. But by deflecting more the uh, right aileron, you will produce the same drag, thus the nose will stay centered and you will not suffer this adverse yaw, okay? So this is a, uh, an example. Another type of ailerons are ailerons that actually when they deflect up, if you try to draw this up, okay, this is the wing, okay, of your airplane, and this, this other type of ailerons, what will happen is that the aileron is the part that goes in here, okay? So, but this type of aileron, they're gonna have a part of the aileron that's gonna go into the airflow, okay? So by going into the airflow, okay, this part in here that goes is gonna go into the airflow will create the drag that is required in order to stay to produce the same drag as the left aileron. So as you can see, there are some type of aileron that are uh, designed in order to correct this uh, adversio. But anyway, guys, if you experience adversio, the only thing you have to do apply a little bit of rudder and make sure you keep your turn coordinated. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed this video about the adversio. If you have any questions, it's very important that you leave a comment below and I will help you out, I will answer you out, okay? If you really want to support the channel, please give it a like, that really helps, okay? Go also go to paroclimb.com where you can subscribe for free paratrain.com. I wish you a great day and I'll see you in the next one.